so Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. return tonight at a new time, 9 o'clock, ABC 7. And I must say that I went for Goblin Premiere. This one was decent, just like Goblin, I guess. In its own way. I mean, unlike Goblin, this would actually be on, been on for a season, so. I didn't go in with many expectations, but I must admit, the show's getting better. It's getting better. Yeah. We've got the, uh, the new villain on the show, the Absorbing Man. Easily one of the most powerful Marvel villains like ever. This guy's going up against the freaking Thor. That's how powerful he is. Of course, Aiden's got their ass whooped, so it's nice to see that they're being accurate for once. Anything's better than freaking uh, Deathlock from season one. God, that was horrible. <laughs> he was like a freaking villain from Smallville, so that's not saying much. There are a lot of uh, decent moments, I guess. The science geeks got less lit. The girl left and the other guy's like mentally damaged or something, so I'm kind of interested to see where that's going to go. Agent Ward is revealed to be a Hydra agent. He's locked up in SHIELD custody. They're all at this uh, secret facility called the Playground or something. Yeah, okay. Tosin is now the director of SHIELD, or what's left of SHIELD. Apparently they're all fugitives now. After Whatever happened in the season finale of season one, I don't remember because I didn't really care. I mean, Sky, Sky is finally an agent. She kicked my friend's butt. Although she's not really as funny or cute as she was in season one. She's all serious now, like that freaking Belinda May chick, who I really don't like at all. She's kind of annoying and. She's a little stone cold for an agent, like, jeez. Can you be a little lighthearted? I mean, it's not that bad, is it? Jeez. <laughs> well, I fight freaks and monsters every day. If I still make jokes about it. Do I have any sparkles, by the way? <laughs> Behind me? <laughs> I am God. I got any sparkles? <laughs> yeah, that still cracks me up. And uh, probably one of the best parts of the premiere was uh, getting the episode had a little flashback to 1945 with uh, the Howling Commandos and Asian Carter. The actual actors from the Howling Commandos, too, from Captain America films. And that happened, like, wow, okay, alright. Stepping it up a little bit. Actually making an effort this time, uh, unlike last season. Which is boring as Shrek. Just, it was just so freaking boring. Like if you want to make a spy show, make a spy show, okay? It's not that hard. The main thing I noticed about the season so far, better writing. It's not so much the show, it's the writing, the direction they want to take. Last season I had no idea what they wanted to do. One episode they wanted to do this, the next episode they wanted to do that. It's like, make up your freaking mind. Easily the best episode of that season was when freaking Sif came down and tried to help him fight that girl, whatever her name is, the Enchantress's sister, to make sure that he has one, yeah, but, so, the main thing I'm wondering is, if they're going to keep fighting the Absorbing Man, can we get some supers on the show, because, I'm hearing Mockingbird's going to make an appearance or whatever, but what the hell is she going to do against the freaking Absorbing Man? Hit him with her stick? No. <laughs> Pretty sure it's not going to be one of damage. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, the first season, when that dude Mike something was introduced and he had this kid, I'm like, wow, I wonder if that kid would be Miles Morales. I mean, I mean, why not? I mean, sure, someone's got Spider-Man's rights, but sure, they can't make up their mind, you know? Like, 
get some supers on this team, man. Those agents cannot be taking all these super villains like like they're actually gonna win the fight. Because they're not. This show just needs some structure, man. It needs a direction, and the season so far looks like it's finally got some direction going. You know, so are the little the teaser for next week. It's kind of a mashup of what they're going to do for the whole season, but from what I've seen, it looks decent. And considering where the show was last season, that's a lot of praise coming from me. Trust me on that. I haven't said too many good things about S.H.I.E.L.D. since it started, but this season, man, you might just stick around. And the other good news is it comes on before the Flash, so I might actually be able to watch both back to back on Tuesday night. So that'll be Monday, Gotham, Tuesday, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Flash, Wednesday, Arrow. And yeah, that'll be my week, and uh, maybe Sunday, once upon a time. Play with the bottle of that show, man. That's the only like decent I might stick around. If it ain't decent, I might not bother. So, second half of season three was so bad, I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this crap. <laughs> you know? It's one of those shows. Like getting out the top. <laughs> I'm keeping my fingers crossed right now that Agents of Shield keeps going with this direction that they're going right now. The need to, like, Keep with this, you know. The pacing is pretty good. It wasn't as like dragging on. They got right to the point and didn't, you know, waste any time. And I gotta say, this is probably the least anticipated show of the fall. So the fact that I found it kind of decent is pretty good. Coming from me. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm gonna be using the reviews of the show. I'll be in touch.